one, SOM1. So SOM1 is one of the enzymes uh, that use an NMN and, uh, and NAD, as long as as well as SOM1 so and POPs. Can you? But it seems to exist only in neurons, and it is related to kind of neuron death. So could you talk about SOM1? What is it, and how is it related to NMN? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, as you say, so SOM1 is an enzyme that triggers a unique cell death pathway that only appears to be present in neurons. And it's some fascinating structural biology, but essentially it reacts to the ratio, uh, not the overall quantity, but the ratio between NMN and NAD. Now remember, NMN is the immediate precursor to NAD. So if NMN isn't getting into NAD, then NMN levels start to accumulate and it, that triggers this pathway. So let me just share a um, figure for you. Do we know why NMN? Because my understanding was that, you know, uh, once NAMPT has done its job, then the NMN to NAD is really quick. So is there something yeah. going wrong there? Yeah, so there appears to be, uh, in uh, when there is axonal damage, this enzyme here called NMNAT2. So this is what converts NMN to NAD. Now, this appears to be the dominant, there are actually three of these NMNAT enzymes, but this is the one that appears to be dominant um, in these cells, in neurons. So uh, under healthy circumstances, NMN is immediately converted into NAD. No problem. You don't accumulate NMN, you have lots of NAD. For whatever reason, when there is axonal injury, and this can be you know, physical injury that occurs to the axons, this enzyme becomes highly destabilized and degrades. And so NMNAT2 degrades, uh, you have very low levels of its activity, and you then end up accumulating more of this NMN. So this then triggers this SAM1 pathway. So SAM1 uh, normally is uh, inactive because there's low NMN and high NAD. However, when you uh, have this axonal injury and NMNAT2 breaks down, uh, NMN accumulates, and so you then have this high ratio of NMN relative to NAD, and that triggers this SAM1 pathway. So what SAM1 then does once it's active is it starts breaking down NAD. It's this furiously breaking down NAD. And this further uh, push, pushes this ratio further in the direction of NMN, because not only are you not converting NMN into NAD, the existing NAD pool is being degraded. It also forms these products that trigger uh, what we call depolarization. So it allows calcium into the cell. And ultimately, it triggers cell death. So, um, you know, you want to avoid the accumulation of NMN in these in your neurons um, because that could trigger this unique cell death pathway. However, this only occurs if there's severe uh, physical injury. Uh, you could imagine that, for example, it would be related to a traumatic brain injury. Uh, otherwise, that you know, NMN is converted. NMN is converted into NAD. The other really important part about this is that uh, NR, NR has the same properties, but NR also has to go by NMN. So it doesn't matter. And, you know, we uh, showed in our paper and others have um, argued that NR is, uh, sorry, NMN is first converted into NR before it's taken up into the cell. So regardless of whether you're giving NR or NMN, ultimately they'll get into the cell in the form of NR and both have to be reconverted back into NMN. So both of these precursors have the same uh, hypothetical risk of, um, of this pathway being active. Now, uh, I don't think this is um, hugely relevant uh, mm -hmm. therapeutically. If there was, it was the case that someone had just had a traumatic brain injury, you would suggest that you would avoid giving uh, NAD precursors. Uh, but outside of that, I don't see um, that it's that relevant. What is probably more relevant is uh, looking at ways to block this enzyme, SARM-1, from triggering cell death. And I know for a fact that it's a company called Disarm Therapeutics, which are developing small molecule inhibitors of the SARM-1 pathway in an attempt to maintain um, cell survival.